Right, good evening and welcome to MD Model Works on, what is it today, the 26th of May on Saturday evening. Um, as you can see we've got everything lined up for an evening's modelling and a bit of a video session. Um, let me just turn this servo off for a moment. Um, couple of things obviously this week has been tinged with a little sadness with the loss of the great Nicky Lauda who I'm of an age where I can remember him racing and I can remember the crash quite vividly sitting on my father's lap on a Sunday afternoon um, did hit home quite hard and also today I've heard of the loss of part of the Old Cloud family which I'm not going to go into any more detail at the moment um, but let's just say it's quite upsetting and that's very bad news for us here at Old Cloud um, but hey ho as they say I guess life goes on at least the gentleman now is at rest and at peace that's all we can say Okay, right, tonight's session will involve gluing the cockpit together, uh, the rear of the seat, the hook um, will need to be sprayed readily, some more work to do onto the main underneath body, some more parts to glue on there. We've got the undercarriage has been built which basically we start off the brake system goes on then you've got the hub the main wheel the hub goes on sorry the the lock and hub goes on inside and just the main hub goes on on the outside that's on a cocktail stick that's ready to be sprayed up all the major parts of the undercarriage have been taken off we have some photo etch parts ready to be glued on but the first thing we're going to do is now that we've got we're happy with our um, seam on the underside now on the front of our undercarriage we're going to go in with our Tamiya P cutter and a Tamiya tape uh, sorry dyno, dyno tape as a line and we'll use that and hopefully show you how to do that how I do that anyway okay right so worst thing with this stuff I mean this stuff is very cheap it's about four quid for four or five spools last forever um, and because it's quite a solid plastic it makes for easy alignment for the pea cutter I'm not very good um, free hand with the pea cutter I will admit I've got more and more confident over the years which is always a bonus um, and it does help to be able to rescribe things. Right, just get rid of that in the bin. Pain in the butt always to take that off there. Right, so all we're going to do first is just line up. This is very simple. Just line it up. Get our pea cutter. Now I've had this one now for ooh, probably five or six years and I've never changed the blade spare blades are in the rear here still the same blades that came with the kit or well, the one blade is still in there let's say for about five years this is still as sharp as ever so all you're going to do is you're going to lay your pea cutter in I like to hold it from the bottom and all we're going to do is slowly drag it across with no weight on the end at all and that will just cut away and give us a nice clean panel line ready for paint and exactly the same on the other side and again very little or no pressure 
couple of swipes. Now you won't be able to see this but there's now two perfect panel lines um, in there ready to go. We've got our Dynatype, as I said it's, it's next to nothing so we just throw it away. But that's as easy as that when it comes to rescribing. So that's that bit done. Right, we'll hold on to this part just for two minutes. We've got our TET or Tamara Extra Thin ready and well and able. We have two of our inlets which we removed earlier. Just want to check my alignment on these to make sure we get them correct. But phew, didn't need to worry because Tamaya has done the job for us and they've made the holes different. So they can only go one way and only can go on one side. So a little bit of tech inside the area and just a touch quick push and that's all you need to do and you didn't see a bit of that did you so I'll take you out a bit and I'll show you the other side I do apologize for that I'm sort of my head's a bit spinny at the moment so I'm not in a good way so we'll try that again in fact what I will do is just move the camera down a little bit help me out a bit here Okay, I do apologise. Very unprofessional. But hey ho. And just slips on. One touch of tet and a slight push. That's all you need. And that will join in. And as you can see, our wheel bay is nicely weathered, ready to receive our undercarriage. Um, I do love this kit. Then we have our uh, first part of the hook area. So what we're going to do, very rarely do this, just lay some tet inside and lay the hook in, or the main part for the hook to join onto. We lay that in just like so. And just to make sure just put a touch each side and that will glue in nicely a hook is here still on the piece of thingy and that will just sit on there this piece of sprue and that actually just clips on which is a fantastic idea because this is going to be metal that would part will be the colour of the main aircraft right I'll just get a peg out ready for that bit while I think about it So that's ready to go. Oop, not that bit. Now what did they do with it? The, with the hook. There it is. And when I was looking at that, I just saw a piece of sprue gate that I missed. So we'll get that in. Get rid of that. And we're happy. Okay. Right. So, in fact, that will actually slide underneath there, clip on, even better. Okay, right. While I've been away and doing different things, I've managed to get the seat done. Um, as you can see in our little figure, and we'll be sitting on our seat just like so. Uh, if I can bring you in just to look quicker, a bit of a closer look. Get that to focus. Uh, come on. There you go. Um, he's all set up. Belts are on. I will, when we got him seated in the right position, hand on the throttle and hand on the um, joystick as it is in one of the F-16s. Obviously it's fly-by-wire. Uh, he'll be done. Like I said, he has been painted up. The seat has been painted up and weathered. And I'm quite happy with her. So that's ready to rumble. Right, so that's one of the parts done. Then we come into our ventral fins. Now, again, making sure we are correct and the lineup is absolutely spot on. 
slips on there like so and all we'll do is just touch that's all we need from one side touch and flow and just to make sure we're in the perfect position and again just check this one to make sure I know what I'm doing take you out a little bit so I don't go off camera too much and well line that one in as well and hold and just touch both sides that's all it needs just to hold it in place and we can set this aside now you can check it by eye, my eye is pretty good and to me I'm quite happy with that so now that can go to one side for a while to dry and then we come to our the rear of our seat now the seat actually slides up and down these runners on the inside which is absolutely brilliant the way that uh, Tamaya have built this kit so it's one of the best kits I've ever built. Just got to suss out how it go. <laughs> so we have firstly our ejection guide, and that just slides in like so. And again, a little bit of glue, just touch it in. That's all we need, and a touch. Perfect. Right, now we come to the sides, and I am looking at the diagrams here, uh, just to, to check everything and make sure we get it aligned properly how we want. And these bits just literally clip in. This is the one thing about Tamaya kits that we all love. This is more, I call this kit building than modelling. With Tamaya, the, the work is so great, especially on the later kits, like this one is, you have to just enjoy the build. I mean, one of these days I'll do something that's a bit more strenuous which needs filling and all sorts of things and I'll show you how I do that but at the moment with this kit for Nick this is what I have to do so that's the rear of the seat done we then have our tub now this is isn't the biggest tub in the world. Let me move you across just that little hair. That's it. Not the biggest tub in the world, um, but a very good tub. So all these parts literally just cl not clip on so much, but we just lay a little bit of paint, uh, paint, tip down, push her in. And the same on this side. Obviously, I've cleaned these parts up already. And the fit is fantastic. Just like so. And again, this side. Line it up. So it looks nice, and again up the bolt wall, and we slide her into place so that she's perfectly lined in, looking good. What we'll do, we'll spray all this up at a later time. I might do it to this evening, I don't know be honest I don't sure if I'm in the mood but I need to get on with this kit I've got a 130 second liberator waiting to come on the bench next we've got our three 
throttle quadrant or sorry our joystick for his left hand what we're going to do we're going to sit him I think what we'll do we'll put our back wall on like so and we'll glue from behind just touching and flowing all around just like so so that we can get our back wall situated this should be nearly dried enough now so I'll we'll see Wrong way, Mark. It goes up that way, you feel. That slides in all the way down to the bottom, and we can settle her in. Oops, that's a bit, a bit previous. She actually sits in there more. like so let's just take her out of there because we have to put her in from underneath I just remembered that bit okay so that settles in just making sure everything is correct then we can gently place our seat in so that's in the correct position where it's going to end up now the reason I did that we're going to sit our little guy in and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue onto that side not having a lot of luck some reason I'm a bit shaky tonight glue that in push that forward get him just about correct okay and then we have our other throttle quadrant well this is the joystick side or the throttles no this is the joystick and we're just going to place that in so that his hand will fit on it perfectly I'm going to have to remove this arm for certain and just make sure that, that fits yeah so what I'll do I'll remove the arm of this one and reset it for the quadrant where it is in the pull back position as we can see we can move him out his arm down so it's lovely and that will push him there that would be nicely okay so that's nice and we're happy with that now to avoid any issues we'll take the c-section out he said very warm in here tonight so anyway that's that bit there right so we're looking at our instructions we have our rudder pedals just checking where they go would you believe it's not on that page bear with me in fact I missed a part which is just exactly the same like me so which part is that that is da -da 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 -da, G25 so we need to find G which we have G25 which is just here so snip 
and snip. Here's one of Mr. Flory's sand and sticks. We'll just take what's left of the sprue gate off. That looks cracking. And having a look, right, I see. Now, there are screws that go through here. And I've forgotten about this. That we have to um, screw down the cockpit to basically to the front of the system. And I think that locks the nose weight in as well. So what we'll do with this part is just get it ready. So we'll stand it to one side and check in everything that we do. I'll we'll just put some glue in there. Get our tweezers. And line in our rudder pedals like so so they can go to one side and can be painted up separately because they're going to need to be put in later on make myself look a bit of a fool tonight but I hope I'm allowed to Saturday right so we have other parts now back to my original page right so we have the side walls, the two side walls, okay, not too bad, they look quite good, we just have to work out which side is which, let's see we go, right that's those ones, right that's these very small parts, I'm going to stick it to my fingers because of the sweat tonight. Just a touch of each part for each bit. Nice to hear the kids playing outside again. Um, again, checking our parts. So this is the bit that goes to the front. And it sits. Just like that. In that area, that's perfect. We'll do the usual thing, we'll paint it all up and we'll come back and detail these parts. And as I said, we have this part there, which is this bit. And I'm looking, always checking the instructions. And that sits on there like so I'm not sure how well you'll see that but there you go it's not very much to see at the moment then we have from the other side we literally just have our little almost looks like a, an old-fashioned windscreen handle whoops that's not how to do it and that sits in and it goes upwards I presume that this is the manual canopy release just tuck her in lovely so she's in and she's vertical as she should be. We have one more part which goes on to our system here. And that's just a little tiny bit of glue. If anybody out there can recommend me a very good set of tweezers, I would be very interested, please. And that sits in the canopy or the cockpit just like so. 
although it's not quite right there. That's better. Slip down. Okay. Right. I'm going to get ready. We're going to come in with some paint. Right. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, hopefully, you can see the tub sitting there in all its glory now. It was primed with Alk 309 black primer and microfiller and then top coat was the medium grey designed for the F16 cockpit um, FS35237 and now what we're going to do, we're going to do some detail work so get our brush paints ready, I've changed the angle because I'm right handed I suppose and with the camera system over my right shoulder I've changed everything around now so that with a bit of luck being right handed you can actually see everything now Tamaya graciously on their call outs give you a description of which panels are black and so on and the colours of the switches um, so basically what we're going to do now is just touch in with the black paint now there are lots of little odds and sods on this black piece to paint rather than large areas to begin with on the front side so all we're going to do is just pick them out with a 10-0 brush just so that we can uh, pick the details out be difficult to see. I will put some stills up at the end of this just so that you can see what we've actually done because this is going to be very difficult to see. Hopefully my bald head isn't going to get in the way. If I bring that over a little bit and this one which is a bit more light on the subject and I can see more as well. Right. Okay so carrying on. It's quite a strange Start to a Sunday morning for me. Detail work. I couldn't do any more last night. I was too shaky after the news that was received yesterday. Um, I decided to call it a night rather than mess everything up that I was doing. I've made that problem before. I've made that sorry that mistake before. So I decided to call it a night, watch some TV, start again today. I'm sure the gentleman in question won't mind. So all we're doing is very lightly detailing the first part. For some reason this is still slightly sticky which is unlike my paint. I do have Dudley in it so there's a likelihood of an interruption at some point. So the whole of this area is a nice black. And we're just picking it out. Pushing the paint around. using the set that I was given at Telford to do the job so we're literally and I say the whole most of this area is painted there is a small part area on the outside of the pit that isn't Just be very careful to get nice straight edges. Oh, 
when I was at school I had an arts teacher Mr Howard uh, I will bring you in a little bit closer um, I was never any good at art if I'm honest I was I liked, I liked art but was just I couldn't draw to this day I could draw stick men that's my max um, and so I'm always nervous when it comes to this part of the painting because I'm not very good at it if I'm honest but I do love the detail work that goes into these I think we'll shut her off don't finish with her today I have a granddaughter visiting this afternoon then everything will cover a hole so we're still looking we're still keen be quiet just filling in of darkened areas trying to get the best way to see so the camera can be seen um, so that area is all grey this area is black literally leaving the paint about on the surface of the project trying to get our straightest edge as possible without going over the paint grey paint I'm doing this slightly back to front so the camera can see what I'm doing hopefully in fact what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this white because I'm sure that's causing more issues than anything with the white balance so that should help as long as you can see what I'm doing, I have to keep checking the camera so and again just keeping the lines tight of that angle I think I'm just going to turn her around you may lose a little bit of sight on this especially with my big old thumb and I'm literally just going to drag the brush yeah poor old Mr Howard we gave him some grief when we were at school <laughs> poor old boy brilliant Greg teacher didn't deserve what he got us off, off us kids. Oh, there you go. Right, so we're going to look again at one of our control columns and the handle. Just looking again, checking, always double check. Be sure, paint once. Now, from that gator just there. black goes around and all the way up the control column joystick whatever you want to call it on an F15 um, F15 F16 I've got F15s in my mind because I'm waiting for them to take off for Duxford although I've turned the scanner off to do this and I'm just doing it now Do put the silver collar on there in a moment or two. So, simply done. Just wondering if that'd be easier. Oh, we 
going for this time. Right, so that's that side done. Um, there's nothing on the rear wall to do. We're going to start on the other side. And we'll start from the back and work forward. So we're just checking. So everything by that white block at the back is black, or at the front of the pit is black. Getting close to the edge, and we're just gradually pulling the paint along. If you use Tamiya, you will push the paint um, through. That's the best way to use Tamiya. With this stuff, out of the little plastic bottles. Um, You could pull, sorry, push the paint, pull the paint rather, which is lovely. I prefer that. And then all we're going to do, a nice draw, a nice line across. And again, we're just getting into all the grooves. We will put a light wash into this to well it'll be a paint wash so that the panels are all marked open so you can see the panels themselves although with the little guy in here which is something I very rarely do in fact I can't remember the last time in fact I can for Mr Richard Roberts this build is dedicated to. I did an A10 and put two little guys into a resin cockpit for them in the olden days, as they say. Now, so it's asking me for everything along here to be black. paint on. Now that little skirt at the front is actually white I believe although I will check the colour. Call it shortly. Um, actually it's not silver so it's a bonus we'll have that out in a moment or three. Right, now we're on the upside part, which again is nearly all black. So we start in the center. Again, checking all our handle grips and everything that we have. I hope you can see what I'm actually painting here. Oh, you can. Let me come around the bottom. Our release of whatever it is. I love aircraft, but I'm not a nerd. There's a door up. I'll just bring the paint up. This paint is drying quite quickly on the Kabaki tape. I always use Kabaki as a palette. Just pick it up, throw it in the bin. Now, just checking our little parts that side. So there is a block here, which is black. Be very careful on this piece. There is a switch gear here. 
that's not quite touched in correct. I lied, this is a 5-0 paintbrush. And there is that's that one little piece there. Okay. So we're gonna have another look, see if there's anything we've missed. Just a quick touch up. Holding my breath while I'm doing it, not a good idea. Just taking it easy. Making sure we've got everything covered that we need to cover. And then we can go on to our grip, which again, at the top is black. We have. Can you see this? Yep. Good stuff. Top there is black. And of course, the other side. And let's just run the paint round. And then the grip. I'm going to check exactly how that's done. Right. Just so we get it in there. Switch area. The trigger itself or the flick switch at the bottom isn't black. So we just. I know you couldn't see that bit, sorry. I have to angle it a little bit. back of the handle as well just to make sure we're correct and that's the black work done on the cockpit now hopefully you'll be able to see that nicely all the panels are painted and I'm quite happy with it so we'll put that to one side and then we'll come in again because on our let's see the rear of our seat has this area painted black as well. So we'll give that some paint on her. Just like so. Oh, I just dislike acrylic paint so much. But for speed, that's fine. The top of the acrylics is they're not very good for hand brushing. They're not very good for an airbrush. Unless you want to spend hours thinning up and getting the correct thin for it. So we're just going to paint the correct areas, that won't be seen on the outside, that's lovely. Okay that can sit there and dry. And we have a few small parts on the walls, a guy keeping it in shot. We're just seeing what we're going to do. Right, so we have the top section. There is black, and that grip is black. Just here, down at that point. Just to finish it off, 
and uh, looking on the other side which is fine it's the same colour as the wall we'll leave those now to dry um, in fact I won't, I'll just clean my brush up working in the paint industry has its bonuses So I have the perfect thinners for everything that I need. Okay, right. So our next one, we did. We painted the undercarriage, which is here. Um, okay, she's all painted up, all nicely done, ready for a wash. We just got to do some of the silver parts. So we're gonna have a look doesn't actually say anywhere where there's any movement there is some decals so what we'll do we'll just put a little bit of chrome um, well this is model air onto the palette or the, I call it a palette, it's not a palette it's actually um, a piece of tape and I'll just paint our undercarriage support arms so that they are ready. Make sure we pull the paint. This is model air but it's not brilliant but it does the job and this is the chrome version of it which compared to Alclad chrome is absolutely rubbish but for detail work like this is fine Everywhere. That's those two bits. Then we have the stanchions that go at the rear of the system. And um, hopefully you can see this. I'll paint them a little bit differently so that that's a bit awkward for me, but get the paint in. Going on this side. Just like so. And make sure they're all done. Nicely, nicely. Okay. Now there was a little piece in the cockpit which this brush is no good for big so we'll clean up our brush get rid of the paint off that we'll come in with our smaller brush get hold of the pit again we've got our trigger mechanism on that part Switch on the top of there, I do now. That's done that. That's done that. We have another trigger area right at the bottom of the joystick. It's only tiny. I'll just paint it in like so. Okay. We have everything there done. Bottom. Paste down, and we have, I presume, is our canopy opening 
area that just has a small piece on it. Okay, right, that's it for now. I'm calling out the end of part. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to watch British Super Bikes because that's my other passion, motorbikes. And then edit this up this evening and put it up. And hopefully start another piece this evening, which will be we've got some dry brushing to do, and so on. And we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Cheers for now.